How does Valve lose money on every single Steam Deck, but still get rich anyway? Valve CEO admitted something shocking about the Steam Deck. They're losing money on every single unit sold. The $399 price tag for the base model, quote, very aggressive and painful. But here's the twist. This losing strategy is actually making them incredibly rich. And today I'm going to show you how exactly this works. If you've ever wondered how gaming companies make their money, stick around because this is going to be very interesting. The Steam Deck has completely changed handheld gaming, but behind its success is a business strategy that seems backwards. Valve intentionally sells this hardware at a massive loss. We're talking about losing $100 to $150 every single Steam Deck that walks out the door. So why would any company do this? Well, it turns out this crazy strategy has been making console manufacturers rich for decades and Valve just perfected it. This is called the Razer and Blades model or loss leader strategy. You sell the Razer cheap even at a loss because you know customers will keep buying expensive replacement blades for years. PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, they've all done this. Sell the console below cost, make the real money on games. But here's what makes Valve's approach genius. While Sony and Microsoft had to build entire game studios and create exclusive games, Valve already had the biggest PC gaming store on the planet. Steam has over 130,000 games ready to go. So when Valve announced they'd sold 3 million Steam Decks, that's Steam Deck users now representing 1% of all Steam accounts. They weren't just selling hardware, they were selling access to their entire ecosystem. Let's break down the numbers. Valve loses roughly $100 to $150 per Steam Deck. Sounds terrible, right? But here's where it gets interesting. Valve takes a 30% cut of every game sold on Steam. The average Steam user buys multiple games per year. Some buy dozens. Do the math. If a Steam Deck owner spends just $500 on games over the device's lifetime, that's $150 in pure profit for Valve, completely wiping out their hardware loss. And most users spend way more than $500. With Valve reporting $5 billion in annual revenue, they can easily absorb these short-term losses for massive long-term gains. But the real genius is in the pricing psychology. A decent gaming laptop costs $1,200 to $2,000. The Steam Deck starts at $399. For budget-conscious gamers, it's a no-brainer. Plus, every Steam Deck runs SteamOS, Valve's own operating system. This isn't just about selling hardware, it's about reducing dependence on Windows and gaining more control over the gaming experience. But here's where it gets really interesting. Gabe Newell actually wants other PC manufacturers to make their own Steam Decks. He said that establishing this product category will have long-term benefits for us. Valve sees the Steam Deck as the starting point for an entire handheld PC ecosystem. Valve's leadership has expressed concerns about Microsoft's increasing control over Windows. The Steam Deck is their insurance policy, their own platform, their own rules. And once you're in the Steam ecosystem, you're likely staying there. Your game library, your friends, your achievements, it all keeps you locked into Valve's platform. This strategy is reshaping the entire handheld gaming market. Nintendo traditionally sells hardware at a profit, focusing on exclusive games. But Valve's approach is different. You're competing on value and accessibility. And it's working. Throughout 2024, the Steam Deck has consistently ranked in Steam's top 10 for revenue. We're already seeing other companies like Asus and MSI get into the gaming handheld space. Exactly what Valve wanted. This is Valve playing 4D chess. They lose money on Steam Deck hardware, but if they can establish SteamOS as the standard operating system for all handheld PCs, they win big. Every device running SteamOS potentially drives more sales through their Steam store. It's brilliant that other manufacturers handle the expensive hardware competition while Valve focuses on what they do best, software distribution and taking their 30% cut. For us consumers, this is actually amazing news. We get premium gaming hardware sold below cost. Valve absorbs the loss because they know they'll make it back through the game sales. 
Plus, you instantly get access to your entire Steam library on a portable device. No need to rebuy games, no exclusive platform restrictions, just pure gaming freedom. In future Steam Deck iterations, well, Valve will likely keep prices competitive while improving hardware, since their real profit comes from software, not hardware. So there you have it, Valve loses money on every Steam Deck sold, but they are playing a much bigger game. They are not a hardware company trying to profit from Steam Deck sales. They are a software platform disguised as a hardware manufacturer. Every loss on hardware is actually an investment in expanding their gaming ecosystem. And with their dominant position in PC gaming distribution, it's a strategy that's virtually guaranteed to work. What do you think about this strategy? Would you buy a Steam Deck knowing Valve loses money on it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, give me a like and subscribe for more deep dives into gaming business strategies. And if you're thinking about getting a Steam Deck after watching this, well, now you know exactly why Valve wants you to buy one. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.